<laughs> now, yeah. you know, there seem to be about maybe eight to ten serious luthiers in the country, right? And do yeah. you do you think there's uh, do you think there's a demand for custom guitars? Is it growing? Uh, where are you hearing about the demand? And uh, if someone wants to get started building guitars, how do they go about it? Uh, there is a demand for sure. And mm-hmm. over the past eight, 10 years, it has increased quite significantly, as I mentioned yeah. earlier, because I think folks are realizing the value in getting something that is made for them, okay. something that is made to a certain standard and to a quality which you won't typically find in the store. Right. Um, I think in terms of, I mean, going forward, that's only going to increase. Uh, That is one part of it. That's my understanding of the market. And uh, this past year, not included because everything's just gone topsy-turvy. But by and large, it has, it's definitely been moving upwards because when I started out, there was literally no market for custom guitars. And we were trying to create a market. Yeah. So from given what it was 10 years ago, it's definitely, definitely improved. I think in terms of people who are looking to start off uh, in India, there's not a lot of options to study okay. instrument making. Like I teach a course once a year or twice a year, depending on my schedule. If I've got some sure. free time, I teach students how to build an acoustic um, or an electric. There's a friend of mine in Bombay, Audi, Audi D'Souza. Right. He's, I think he also teaches um, electric making, if I'm not mistaken. And, but apart from that, I really don't know of anyone who teaches or who has currently reached a stage where they can teach. Let me right. also say that. Sure. Right. There are some great, uh, I mean, there's some new builders who are coming up and they're doing a great job. They've uh, started off recently and they're doing really, really beautiful work. And it's lovely to see it because it's not, it's not a, it's not a factor of competition or anything. I think it's just right. great that the more builders there are, the more our community grows and the right. more the market develops. Yeah. And I think it's about time that people started taking this as a serious craft. Right. You know, in India, guitar making all these years has been largely relegated to parts of uh, South India and parts of Kolkata. Yeah. And it's been mostly, mostly it's just been the lowest end instruments possible. Sure. Right. How can I sell a guitar for 2000 rupees? How can I sell a guitar right. for 2500 rupees? And as a result, you end up making something based on the selling price versus making something that is of quality. Right. Right. And I think that's changing now, which is lovely. People are trying to do new work. People are trying to do interesting work. And some of them are already doing a great job. Some of them may need a few more years to get there, but it's a, it's a positive direction of okay. growth. Right. Okay. And clearly it's, clearly it's motivating them because there are, there's a market for it because people are buying. Right. Right. So that encourages them to then build more. Okay. So it's not that people, the earlier the thinking was that no one has the money to spend on guitars. It's not true. People have the money. Right. And you just have to give them something that they see as a value proposition. Right. Right. You have to give them something that they want. Fair enough. So, uh, so in that sense, I think it's a, it's a good direction that the market is heading in in, in India. Okay. So uh, currently you work alone and mostly and... Uh, do you plan on ever getting into mass production or maybe putting out a line just for, uh, you know, uh, something to keep on the, uh, that goes off the shelf? Uh, and, d- or do you just want to keep continuing to do what you do right now? Uh, it's, it's a, it's a conundrum. It's something okay. that I've been thinking about for a while. Right. I don't think I have the desire to set up a mass production unit. All right. I think if, I ever do something which is off the shelf, it would be in the electric line because those are easier for me to build in a batch and put them out there. If there are retailers interested, Um, I'm in talks with a couple of stores around the country. And if that works out, then that is something that may happen. It's nothing has been decided yet, but with the acoustics, I don't think it makes sense, honestly, because I think my, um, the fun of coming to someone like me is to get a piece that is right. made to your specs. Yeah. Now, if I've already built a guitar and if it works for you, that's brilliant. Right. If it doesn't work for you, then, you know, right. it's, Makes what's sense. the point? Yeah. That is no yeah. different from having any other guitar hanging in that shop. 
Right. It may sound great, but if it doesn't feel right for you, then that it's a wasted effort. Yeah. So I would much rather build based on my conversations with the client because if I don't have it, I I go through several rounds of very in-depth conversations, and if that doesn't happen, I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, I can build a guitar, but then I don't know how it's going to suit you. Yeah. And that's the important part. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, Karan, before we close out for today, I want to hear a story from you. Uh, it's about the kind of uh, some of the people that have bought your guitar right now. One of them is Amrit Gond. He's a finger style uh, artist from the UK, and he's a two-time Grammy winner. He uses one of your guitars. And uh, something that really caught my eye is Bob Weir, founding member of the Grateful Dead. Uh, he supposedly owns one of your guitars. Uh, and as a bit of a uh, deadhead myself, if you'll indulge me, um, how did he hear of you? How did he reach out to you? How did he convey what he wanted and what is the kind of guitar that you finally ended up building for him? Okay, so with uh, Bob Weir, it wasn't, it wasn't a commission piece in that okay. sense. So uh, what happened was I, where was this? I think it was around 2017, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. I was in Canada for a guitar show. Right. And I'd, I'd taken a couple of instruments over there. And uh, a friend of mine reached out to me. Uh, he was a senior of mine from school days. Right. right? And he had, uh, I think, seen some pictures of me exhibiting at the show. And right. he wanted to have a chat. And at that time... He said, you know, I've got a friend who's into guitars and plays this, that, the other. And uh, would you be interested in, uh, you know, showing, sending a guitar across so that I can, you know, maybe show it in case he's interested. So I said, okay. And then turns out that he'd started a business venture with Bob there. Oh, wow. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's still on, but at the time it was. And so I, I shipped this out. And the next thing I know is a few days later, I got a photograph of Bob with with the instrument and I was like, you've got to be kidding me, dude. Like I really did. <laughs> this is not what I was expecting. And, uh, yeah, so he liked the instrument. And, uh, so it went from there, man. It wasn't like he didn't come down and see the sure. show or anything. So okay. I still haven't met him in person. All right. But that's how he ended up with one of my guitars. He still has it. It's his, I mean, he's, uh, decided to hang on to it. All so right. that instrument is with him. Um, with Amrit Son, uh, he is, He's a gem of a guy, man. I met him at a show in the UK a few years okay. ago, and he was introduced to me through Jason. Uh, he's known Jason Costell for a while. Okay. And so he came down and met me at uh, at a show I was doing in London, and he played one of my instruments and was just he he thoroughly enjoyed it. So on the spot, he was like, "I need you to build me something. It's going right. to be a tribute to my late to my late mum." She's the one who encouraged me on my musical journey and got okay. me into playing guitar growing up. So it was a it was a very very emotional build for okay. him because it right. it had a lot of little elements built in which were tributes to his mother, right. and uh, that went off really well. So, uh, right. It was an extremely personal thing. So he received that last summer, and now we're currently building a second one for wow. him. He's now on uh, the next one is current. I've just started it last week, in fact. So that's going to be ready later this year. Awesome. Yeah. Let's, let, let's hope he uh, wins another Grammy with that guitar. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Karan, thank you so much for taking the time out to do this. Uh, you know, thank you for just laying out the whole scenario and sharing what you do and how you do it. So thanks again, Karan. Awesome. Well, thank you. It was good fun chatting with you and some interesting questions over there. So yeah. thank you. You've clearly done some research before starting this session so i appreciate that thank you man all right take care yeah